photographs of green, orange, black, pink and blue snakes flash on screen. Snakes evolved from lizards and have been around for approximately 100 million years. There are more than 4,000 living species of snake that have been discovered, described and named. They inhabit nearly every part of the earth being found on all but the coldest land masses and the most remote islands, and some oceans. Some snakes are adapted to live entirely in water, never coming ashore, while others live in deserts, grasslands, heathland and forests, extending from the tropics far into the temperate latitudes, where they may climb in trees, hide in leaf litter, or burrow in sand and soil. A snake in leaf litter. Snakes are incredibly varied with the smallest living species being only around 10 centimetres long and the longest up to 7 metres or so. Some snakes are stout and chunky, such as ambush hunters, including large forest vipers, and some are long and thin, such as mambas. But the most obvious distinguishing traits of a snake are that they are scaly, with an elongate flexible body, and that they have no limbs, no external ear openings and no eyelids. A green snake stares with unblinking yellow eyes. Stella West. Humans, on average, have 33 vertebrae. Snakes have between 100 and 400 vertebrae in their body, and they can even have an additional 10 to 200 vertebrae in their tail. Each vertebrae that they have in their backbone is paired with two ribs. So, for example, if a snake has 200 vertebrae in its backbone, it will have 400 ribs in its body. And these ribs and all of these vertebrae are actually what give snakes their very flexible bodies and what allow them to maneuver their habitats in the way that we see them exploring the world around them. It is what allows them to slither on the ground, allows them to climb trees, allows them to swim quickly through water and also burrow underground. A sea snake swims. On land, a snake rests on a rock. Some snakes are slow. Some even sit and wait motionless for their prey for hours. These ambush predators often do not move fast along the ground, but they can strike at prey extremely fast. Rattlesnakes and rat snakes, for example, have been measured striking at speeds of up to three meters per second. In terms of moving over the ground for greater distances, some of the fastest snakes include mambas and racers that have been clocked at speeds approaching 20 km per hour. Sidewinders have been measured moving at nearly 30 km per hour. A sidewinder slithers. David Gore. Snakes have all the same senses that humans do. Some of these are more or less well developed than, than in humans. And snakes also have some additional senses that, that we don't have. And these help them to uh, find prey, find mates and to help avoid predators. Unlike lizards and most other land vertebrates, snakes don't have an external opening for their ear and they don't have an eardrum. These were disposed of during their evolution. However, snakes do still have parts of the middle and inner ear that allow them to hear and to sense balance uh, in the same way that other vertebrates do. But overall, snake hearing is more adapted to uh, perceive vibrations transmitted through the ground or through the water than it is to hear airborne sound. During the origin and early evolution of snakes from their lizard ancestors, sight became a less important sense and chemical detection became a more important sense. The tongue, long forked tongue of snakes is flicked out of the mouth frequently and this picks up smelly molecules from the environment and these are passed to pits in the roof of the mouth that connect to sensory chambers that allow them to detect those chemicals. Snakes have pressure and vibration sensing organs and this can be seen as tiny pits on their scales. Uh, they're particularly common on the scales on the head of especially aquatic snakes. These organs seem to be particularly good at sensing vibrations that are transmitted via water or through the ground. Unlike lizards and most other vertebrates, snakes lack eyelids. Instead, they have a transparent, specialised head scale that covers the eye. And this is what gives snakes their glassy stare. Although snakes evolve from lizards, the, uh, the eyes of snakes and lizards are actually really quite different. It seems that when snakes uh, originated in, and in their early evolutionary history, vision became less important for them, possibly because they were burrowing or nocturnal. And so they lost parts of the eye that you can see in lizards, and they also lost some of the genes that are involved in vision. Some snakes today that are extreme burrowers in sands and soil uh, retain these simplified eyes, and they're often hidden under normal head scales. But other snakes, uh, do seem to use vision as an important sense for catching 
uh, even fast-moving prey, and these have large eyes and are often active in the day. As well as being able to sense the same part of the light spectrum that humans can, some snakes can see into the infrared part of the spectrum. They do this using specialised pit organs that are found in pit vipers between the eye and the nostril, or in boas and pythons along and on the scales by the lips. Signals from these specialised pit organs are processed in the same part of the brain that processes vision, so that snakes effectively can see past the electromagnetic radiation that humans can only sense as warmth. A brown and black snake flicks its tongue. The oldest recorded snake is a royal python that lived for more than 47 years in captivity. There are few studies of the lifespan of wild snakes, but North American rat snakes are thought to live to 20 or 30 years. The snake descends slowly. Patrick Campbell. As in lizards, their closest relatives, the skin of snakes is covered in scales. These are made of keratin, the same protein found in human hair and fingernails. On the top surface and on the sides of the snake, the scales are usually small and regular. Scales on the underbelly tend to be narrow for those that burrow or swim, or broad. They may be granular, have a smooth surface, or contain ridges or keels. They have very finely spaced ridges or pits which help to shed water and dirt. All snakes have transparent, modified scales over their eyes called spectacles or brills. Some even have bony structures embedded within the skin on the tail called osteoderms. Their primary function is to protect the snake. They also reduce water loss and are the basis for the intricate color patterns they have. They also help the snake to get around by reducing or increasing friction, depending on its position and style of locomotion. They can help to grip prey such as slippery fish. Snakes regularly shed their skin to allow for growth and repair throughout life, similar to how we need to resole our worn out shoes. During this period, the snake tends to lose its appetite and the skin tends to lose its fresh appearance and turns a milky white color due to the lubricant which is produced for this process. This strangely occurs more often in sea snakes than land snakes, probably to reduce the chance of algae or barnacles growing on the surface of the body. Some have iridescent scales, like this iridescent shield-tailed snake and the Brazilian rainbow python, possibly for confusing predators, and some have rougher textures dispersing rather than regularly reflecting light. Infrared signals are initially received by nerve fibers in the highly specialized pit organ in the face of the snake. Some even have scales shaped to mimic other creatures in order to attract unsuspecting targets. The spider-tailed horn viper has long, thin scales at the tip of their tails that look like a spider. Once their prey comes in closer to examine the spider, the snake attacks. The rattle of the rattlesnake is also made of rings of keratin at the end of the tail, which produce a warning sound when shaken. People use the skin of snakes to produce leather goods where the outer part of scales is removed, but with the patterns still visible. This is a conservation threat. The vast majority of snakeskin traded is from wild caught animals that puts pressure on natural populations. A pale sea snake swims over coral. Most fully marine snakes live in shallow water and are active in habitats like coral reefs and seagrass beds. The deepest record thus far is of two unidentified sea snakes foraging in dark and cold water at a depth of nearly 250 meters off the coast of Australia. Marion Seagull. So snake feeding is absolutely unique. They are the only animals in the world that can eat really large prey without processing their food, meaning they don't tear apart, they don't chew their food, they just swallow the whole thing. And they are able to do that because they have a highly mobile skull. They have 30 bones that can move uh, independently from one another. And it's, so we call this curl snake a kinetic skull. So it has a lot of independence in the movement, so they can swallow whole prey. And this is one of the main characteristics of snakes, and that's what distinguishes them from limbless lizards, for example, and what makes them uh, a really evolutionary group in terms of adaptation to feeding on different prey. So snakes are all carnivores, meaning that they all eat other animals, and they can eat a variety of things from tiny termites or their larvae to big alligators or antelopes. And they can do that thanks to their highly mobile skills. And because they eat this uh, really large prey, 
and they don't chew them, they have to swallow the whole thing. And because they don't have limbs, they will need to compensate with their head. So they will need to catch the prey, manipulate it, and then swallow it only with the head. So the highly kinetic skull is doing all of these things, contrary to other animals. So snake can eat a variety of prey, and they will basically go for anything that passes by and anything that is of a reasonable size. So they won't eat like really big things, so they won't eat you. But they will go for anything that's about the size of their head or twice the size maximum. Because snake eat the whole prey, they will have to digest fur, feathers, teeth, bones, claws, and everything. But digestion is not the hardest part for snakes because they have a very acidic stomach and they take days or weeks to digest. The trickiest part for a snake is actually to catch, manipulate, and swallow the prey. And so to do so, they will use their head. So they will um, catch the prey and then they have to orientate it in a way that it, that it can be swallowed. And they don't have limbs, right? So they will have to use coordinated movements of their bones, of the bones of their skulls. And they have um, eight pairs of bones that are completely dedicated to feeding. These bones, uh, we discovered recently that their shape is actually um, depends on, is adapted to uh, the type of prey they are going to eat. And we also discovered more recently even that not only the bones are adapted to diet, but also their teeth. So when we think about uh, the teeth of snakes, we immediately think about fangs, right? But fangs, so first, not all snakes have fangs. And second, um, fangs are two teeth, right? And snakes can have over 200 teeth. One thing that snakes have all in common is their teeth are all uh, kind of needle-like and they are curved backwards and on the inside, meaning that when a prey is gonna, is gonna go into the mouth of the snake, so this is the teeth, it's gonna slide over the teeth, but then it cannot go back. So they are gonna be stuck. And because the teeth are oriented uh, inwards, if I can say that, um, then the prey don't have another choice than just to go down the throat. So it's very, very efficient. The largest recorded meals are in the region of 130 pounds, nearly 60 kilograms, being deer or antelopes swallowed by pythons of approximately 5 meters or longer. A snake swallows a toad, Jeff Stryker. Many species of snakes have something called venom. Venom is a special toxin that snakes use to acquire prey items. The venom is made in special glands in the head of the snake and then injected through specialized teeth into different types of food they'd like to eat. There are many different types of venom, including venoms that are called cytotoxins. Those are venoms that cause cell death and pretty bad damage to tissues. There are also venoms called hemotoxins. These are venoms that affect the circulatory system of prey items. And there are venoms called neurotoxins. These are toxins that affect the nervous system of a potential prey item. Venoms are made in the genomes of snakes, so different genes are expressed in the venom glands in their head. That means they carry around the ability to make venoms with them about in their daily lives. But this isn't the only way that snakes use toxins. There are some species of snakes that actually eat toxic food to gain those properties. Some species eat toads and even beetle larvae that are toxic and take those toxins and put them in their tissues. This makes the snake also toxic, and that helps them avoid predation, making them very distasteful to something that might want to eat them. Many species of snakes specialize on mammalian prey. That includes animals that are most closely related to us, humans. Many species of snakes that have this ability can be dangerous for people. That means that the proteins in their venoms can cause people to become very sick or sadly even die. But research on snakes is helping make snake bite less dangerous, and it's also helping us understand how snake venoms can actually help people. That includes by isolating certain components of the venom that can treat heart disease and other chronic conditions that people suffer with. A dark tan snake slithers over the ground. 
The most venomous recorded snake is the inland taipan, found in central Australia. A typical bite could kill tens of people, and one individual produced enough venom to kill a hundred adult humans. However, this species lives in remote places and very rarely encounters humans. The inland taipan flicks its dark tongue. Film credits appear over a CT scan of a snake. 